A public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in a court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network, a network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. This is the story of a boy who set a camera trap to get a picture of a small, harmless animal. What he caught was something much bigger, a murderer. When Gary Johnson, young naturalist and wildlife photographer, checked his camera the next day, he knew his trap had worked. He didn't know how well. Mr. Sanders! Mr. Sanders, something awful's happened. It's, it's Miss Bascom. What about her? I found her over in the park. She's... She's dead. Dead? Are you sure? Come on, quick. I'll show you. We'd better notify the police. Did you know this girl? Yes, I... I knew her. We were engaged to be married. Had you set a date yet? Oh, not exactly. You see, I... I've been a little financially strapped, and we've been putting it off. Mm. You didn't happen to be with her last night? Yes, I, I was with her. We went to a movie, and then afterwards it was such a nice night that we decided to go for a drive. That's interesting. Where did you drive to? Well, we, we, we drove through the park here. You'll have to come with me, Mr. Sanders. What for? I think the captain will want to have a talk with you. Mr. Sanders didn't do it. He couldn't. Why couldn't he? He just couldn't. He's the best teacher in school. He's my best friend. And he wouldn't hurt anything or anybody. Thanks, Gary. You'll probably have your chance to tell all about Mr. Sanders later, in court. All right, let's go. At the preliminary hearing, I was appointed to defend Sanders. He couldn't afford private counsel. Now, Gary, would you words, please? Exactly what happened the day you found Miss Bascarati? Well, sir, I collected some insects, and then I checked my camera. You see, I was trying to get a flashlight picture of Procy and Lotor. Now, that's a raccoon. <laughs> Thank you. Do you always use the Latin or scientific names? Oh, most of the time, sir. Uh, Mr. Sanders, our general science teacher, says it's the best. Did you get the picture, Gary? I got something all right. Of course, I couldn't tell what it was at that time. But I knew that some animal had grabbed the bait and set off the camera and taken its own picture. It's neat the way it works. I learned the trick from Mr. Stone. Will you tell us what happened next? Do I have to talk about that again? I've already told everything. The judge wants to know, Gary. And then Gary told of his frightening discovery. The next witness was Howard Stone, owner of a camera shop, a friend of Gary and his advisor in wildlife photography. He didn't seem to relish what he had to tell. Yes, uh, I saw them together that night. Where? In Sanders' car, just before they turned into the park. Now, do you remember what time that was? Yes, it was around the 10.30. Did you speak to them? No, I called and waved, but they didn't seem to notice me. Why not? Well, they, they seemed to be preoccupied. In what way? Well, I, I couldn't be sure, but I thought they were arguing, quarreling. That's not true. We weren't quarreling, Howard. Well, maybe I got the wrong impression. I, I'm awfully sorry I said anything, Ralph. Mr. Stone, 
Mr. Sanders, you're out of order. Do not address each other. As a result of the preliminary hearing, Ralph Sanders was held for trial on a charge of murdering his fiancée. I... I don't understand it. Why should he say we were quarreling? Could he have had any reason for lying? No, that's what puzzles me. We've always been good friends. Was Stone a friend of the Bascom girls, too? Yes, and he knew her before I did. In fact, he introduced us. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, Howard and June used to go together. Oh, I guess I should have told you that before, Mr. Matthews. You should have. What happened to that romance? Well, I'm afraid I did. It was just one of those things. Well, sometimes those things can be quite important. Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing like that. Howard's a right sort. He's a, he's a good loser. Right sort. Well, Howard Stone and I are different. I'm not a good loser. Mrs. Dennis? Yes. I'm Bart Matthews, Public Defender's Office. May I ask you a few questions? Oh, I certainly. Is anything wrong? No, nothing to be alarmed about. Do you have a tenant named Howard Stone? Oh, yes, indeed. He lives right across the hall. Well, do you know him personally? Anything about his habits? Oh, of course. I make it a point to know all my people. Mr. Stone's awfully nice, quiet, regular with his rent. He runs a camera store in town. Yes, I know. Uh, did you see Mr. Stone on the night of the 16th? Last Friday. Friday? Friday. Oh, that's the night I was reading such a good book. Mad Love. I just couldn't put it down. And I'm usually in bed at 9.30. Yes, but... As I said, I couldn't put the book down, so I did hear Mr. Stone come in. Do you remember what the time was? Well, let's see. Anthony had just grabbed Caroline and pulled her toward him when Mr. Stone interrupted. I, I mean, he came in. I see, but do you remember what the time was? Yes, I glanced at the clock. It was 10.30. Well, that checks. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, Mr. Matthews. Yes? There was something else that happened that evening. I don't imagine it's important, but it was a little unusual for Mr. Stone. And what was that? Well, as I said, I couldn't put the book down. So I did hear Mr. Stone go out again around 11 o'clock. I suppose he forgot some cigarettes or something. And did you hear him come back in again? No, no, I didn't. Shortly after that, I finished the book and went to bed. Thank you, Mrs. Dennis. You've been very helpful. No, not at all. I set out for the home of Gary Johnson, the boy who found the body. Gary wasn't home but his mother rather proudly showed me the quarters of the budding young naturalist. It's Gary's bedroom, but also his dark room, laboratory, and museum. I can't tell you when you'll be back. You know how boys are. Well, it's not important, Mrs. Johnson. I just thought that Gary might have overlooked some detail that might help. Uh, do you mind if I look around? Not at all. Gary does all right with the camera. Getting good animal shots isn't easy. He works hard at it, and he loves it. That's his latest roll, drying. It's a nice squirrel picture. And the snap turned out fine. <laughs> Gary's becoming quite good at it. Mr. Stone has helped him a lot. You know, Gary testified at the hearing that he took all of these pictures at the park. I believe he did. 